University of Colorado is an interesting place. It's an R1 institution that generates over $700 million in research funding per year, yet they find a way to strike a connection with the faculty as well as the students. And in my time here, that spirit of connection through community work and pro bono clinics or faculty helping each other out, that spirit has remained my whole time here. My father was in the first class. There were six people in the class, two of them males. He was coming out of the post-World War II era. Rehabilitation was a needed field for uh, some of the vets coming out. And then it was also the beginnings of the polio ep epidemic. I think those two factors kind of led him into the field of physical therapy. I knew I wanted to be a PT for a long time. And at, in Colorado, the only program was the University of Colorado. So I went to Boulder. And during your junior year, you had to take kinesiology, and that's the time that you applied to the PT program. I can remember the day we drove down. We went to 9th and Colorado Boulevard. The PT school was in the back of the Department of Physical Medicine and Rehabilitation, and there we interviewed with a single person, and that person was Ms. Dorothy Hoig. Dorothy Hoig was very well known in the community and very well respected in the community. She had demanded of some professional behavior and she got it. And she was uh, a stickler, you could say, for decorum. She had some rules. Your skirts had to be at least three to five inches below the bottom of the patella. Your fingernails, if you hold your hand up, could only be a sliver over the fingertip. Your hair had to be neat and in place. She, as well as a lot of other clinicians at that time, wanted you to belong to the American Physical Therapy Association, which was the national organization. And they expected uh, membership in that. We each wore this little triangular patch, blue, yellow, and white, and it was attached to your sleeve. And everybody wore that to show that you were indeed a member of the American Physical Therapy Association. Back in the early 80s, the rumor was that the physical therapy program was not making money for the School of Medicine. So they decided maybe we'll just close the school. We got together and we decided that it would probably be good to do a letter writing campaign to the dean of the School of Medicine. It was very successful. He said, you can, you can let everyone um, at the school and everyone around know they don't have to send any more letters because we're not gonna close the school. <laughs> you know, this core group that, that w was working on the letter writing campaign uh, said, maybe we need to form an alumni association. The alumni association has, has really helped with the mentorship of, of students. You know, they know, and, and to this day they know, that the alumni of the school um, are behind them. As co-president of the PT Alumni Association, our role has definitely been a lot more involved. We've been able to implement a first up program. Um, so first generation uh, PT students have a chance to be mentored by somebody who has graduated from the program. And we are just trying to let our students know that we're there for them, not just when they graduate, but as they're going through the program as well. I began teaching in, uh, at CU in 1978. The bachelor's degree at that time was 15 months long. We still didn't have research in the bachelor's degree. When we switched to a master's though, that allowed us to begin to think about it. And so we had a one credit course that we developed that was on research. When we moved for the third time that I can remember into the old Department of Public Health building where we had large labs there and actually had some space and some equipment to do some research. We decided as a faculty, you can't do a full-blown research project, but we could do projects that were related to reliability. We even submitted to APTA for conferences and the students got to present them as poster presentations. Going from a master's degree to a doctoral degree entails really 
developing an educational program at a, at a much different level. And so one of the challenges was to figure out how to have a cohesive curriculum that introduced students from early on into not just the fundamentals of physical therapist practice, but also all of the evidence, the rationale, and the clinical reasoning that goes behind practicing at this higher doctoral level. PhD education is a separate issue because that's aside from the clinical degree, but that's a degree that is um, designed to develop rehabilitation scientists who can help to contribute to the basis for physical therapist practice. And so that was another whole curriculum development that was required, as well as working with the administration to understand why a PhD in rehabilitation science was critical. It was clear to me as I came in as director of the program that part of what makes a very good educational program is having a cadre of scientists who are helping to develop the evidence for the education that we teach. It takes really good clinicians, really good educators, and really good scientists all working together to have a program that meets all of the students' needs and all of the profession's needs. I became the Director of Clinical Education in 1996. So from 1996, we went from the master's program to um, DPT. The trend was to, we have increased time devoted in clinical education as well as increased length of individual clinical experiences. We also added integrated clinical experiences. That really changed clinical education because students were able to get in the clinic early and often, so they had that integration of learning in the classroom, applying it in the clinic, bringing their clinical experiences back to the classroom to really motivate them to learn more in the classroom. When I was in practice, uh, we'd always felt that uh, students brought out the best in our clinicians. I became involved in the Scholarship and Endowment Board. It's been very important to me to help students be able to fund their education and get out with as little debt as possible so they can make wise choices in their career, not always financial choices. We developed an advisory scholarship and endowment board starting in 2012 at a time when it became clear that if we didn't have scholarships, um, we would be limited in attracting some of the students that we really wanted to come to the program. We were particularly interested in attracting some of the highest quality students and also some of the highest quality diverse students. We had very low diversity among our student body. And in order to educate graduates who would reflect the communities broadly with whom we work, it was really important that there be a much greater um, diversity among our student body. Ten years after the inception of the CU physical therapy program, we had our first black graduate, uh, R.H. Kennan, and then two years uh, later we had Billy Clemens who established the American Academy of Physical Therapy, which was an association for underrepresented minorities. So I think that that ideal of inclusion is part of who we are. Having said that, uh, only 5% of physical therapists or less are African-American, and compared to other health professions, Hispanic, Black, and Native American peoples are underrepresented within the profession. So there's a lot that we can still do. I arrived at CUPT in August of 2019, and less than six months later, we were in a full-blown pandemic and had to pivot quickly. I remember Dr. Harris Love coming in and in the afternoon and saying, okay, well, we are officially done with on-campus learning. And kudos to the staff, to the faculty, because they were able to turn things around so quick. Our first clinical rotation was supposed to be in April. We got pushed all the way to August. I came into that first clinical rotation with a little bit more education and 
in my pocket of, okay, I could treat a little bit more than what I would have been able to at, in April. We had great leaders who helped along the way, the Clint Ed team, the whole faculty, you know, the director, everybody top down, they took the helm and led us and we were able to just follow suit. We were dedicated to making sure students graduate on time. I would say that that was a time of, of team building and in many ways set the future course for our program because we, we learned how to do things differently. We learned how to understand the limitations of technology and to embrace the benefits. The future of CU Physical Therapy, I think really reflects the full spectrum of physical therapy education. Uh, so you could think about our efforts to be uh, leaders in post-professional education by establishing new residencies in orthopedics, as well as a faculty development residency. Uh, we've made strides by providing more opportunities for therapists by establishing our DPT and MPH program. And I think we're embracing new ways to learn through our hybrid pathway at UCCS. And so that will allow us to reach um, a, a whole new group of individuals who otherwise wouldn't be able to engage in DPT education. Ultimately, my decision to choose CU is because it's one of the higher ranked PT programs. The physical therapy program here at CU does a great job as far as making sure their students are set up for success. They push me to to be the best version of myself and every one of them, you know, thank you.